Thank you very much. It's great to be with you today. Uh, I'm here representing the Cherokee Nation. This is half of our immersion classroom. The other half is at the Cherokee Language Bowl competition, so we split up today. So the other half, some of them will be there tonight, so you may get to meet them tonight. Uh, we'd like to have a little reading right now, if we could. You ready? Go ke yi E chi chi squa a na sta a ya wa ti sko E chi chi squa a go ti ha e qui ka okay come on out guys can you come out a little bit what we'd like to do now is a couple of our teachers will serve as interpreters to you and if you would we'd like to demonstrate that they uh, know how to use their language. This is more than just memorization. Uh, we would like you to ask questions to the interpreters where we cannot hear them, and then they will ask our students in Cherokee. They will then respond in Yoneger English, and then they will answer in Cherokee, and the teachers will tell you what they said, if that would be okay. I'm sorry. You ready? Whoever would like a question? To ask him a question. Oh, guys, guys, if you know the answer, raise your hand. The Oost do Sue hit us and all, huh? Oost. Your name. Don't get Oost. Say in English. Oost Sue hit us and all, huh? The Oost. Jahani, Jasanoha, the Oost to Suhit. Skin ho hissy, the Oost to Suhit, Jasanoha. What color is your dress? Gadonu. Gado Oosti, the Suisti, Asano. Respond back to you. How are you today, Tianta, honey? How are you today, Tianta? Sudali. Skin no his thing, your nag again. Your nag. Sudal, Hada. Sudali. Um, your neck on. They won't. Your neck in your neck, he know his today, Tiet, get her. Johanny, did they tell you that he know his sin? Nay, how long did they tell me? You know, he got he know his sin. We apologize. We have a very strict, strict adherence to no English in the classroom, and they will not speak English unless forced. And, <laughs> and that's the way we want it, right, parents? So we didn't, we didn't know how well they would respond to the lights and all the glitz. This is a lot of glitz for us, but thank you very much. We're very proud of them.
And any questions from the board? Could you go over the numbers of children being served and uh, how this compares to uh, your beginning efforts? I know it's probably a beginning effort, but I know you've got a large citizenry enrollment for the tribe. And, and, uh, yes. And Our, can you give us some comparatives of what you're doing here and what the numbers are and the challenges you face in doing the, the uh, cultural and language restoration here? Yes, sir. Our numbers are over 250,000. We currently have 38 students in our Tahlequah Language Center. We have about 12 at Lost City, I believe. Uh, the good news is uh, we had trouble finding teachers this fall, but we opened the teacher accreditation program where teachers are accredited by Oklahoma, and we currently have over 45 students in that program. So we hope within two years to graduate teachers to fill positions for additional classrooms. Those are your adult learners in that 45? That yes, record? they will be state accredited teachers. They will have a degree in education and it will also be in Cherokee education. So you they will a, be fluent. Uh, there's a bachelor's in Cherokee, is that yes, correct? Yes, sir. We're yeah. the first tribe that, to establish that with the a state department, which ours is Oklahoma. Good, excellent. I also have a, a, an additional question, and that is that um, I know that um, your tribal government has taken a, a very active role in supporting this program, and certainly language and cultural programs are important to tribes across the country, but I noted with particular interest that the Cherokee Nation declared a state of emergency with respect to um, uh, what they perceive would soon be a loss of, of the Cherokee language. And I'm wondering if you could just talk a little bit more about um, what you think may be the importance of the government itself prioritizing this issue and giving tribal government support, um, it seems to me, comprehensively, and if you think that's been an important factor in the success of your program. It's critical. Our program right now, it costs about $3 million a year to run the language programs that we have. These are based on a study that was performed about two years ago, and it found that we skipped a generation. We had no fluent Cherokee speakers under the age of 40. So to bridge that gap, and what we know from language study is if you skip a generation, you are doomed to extinction. So we are going in and using a best practices model we discovered through a review of the literature that the Hawaiians have the best model in the world. And this is patterned after the Hawaiian model and Pila Wilson who saved the Hawaiians. Uh, we start at the, L the preschool level because that's when the language window opens. And uh, it's amazing, the parents fuss sometimes because they can't keep up with uh, what the kids learn. And we know we're doing some good. We couldn't get it on film, but when they argue and fight about crayons or on the uh, playground, it's in Cherokee, and it is just, it's, it's a hoot to see them do that. It's really fun. Uh, but that was the basis of the study, and if you do not put them in immersion settings, we have not found anything to be a substitute for that. Partial immersion does not work. Community courses are limited in effectiveness, and that total immersion setting is the best way to do it. We also work with the linguists at Kansas University, Dr. Yamamoto. The hole in our program right now is the assessment. Most, most languages do not have a good assessment, objective assessment tool, and we are contracting with them to develop assessments for preschool all the way through adulthood and mastery. And those should be available this spring, so we're very happy. <laughs> 